Hello, this is Group A7, and I am Joe Mike Milley, and we will be talking about the division rule. Now, the division rule helps us with counting how many ways there are to do something. So, other similar rules are like the product rule, which says that if there are X ways to do the first task, of a procedure and Y ways to do the second task of this procedure, then there are X times Y ways to do the total procedure. The sum rule says if there are X ways to do a task and they are all equivalent and there are Y ways to do a task, which are also all equivalent, but disjoint from the first set X, then there are X plus Y ways to do it. There's also a subtraction rule about inclusion and exclusion. I advise you see the other screencast on that because we'll be talking about the division rule. The division rule states that there are n over d ways to do a task if it can be done using a procedure that can be carried out in n ways and for every way w exactly d of the n ways correspond to way w. Think of how to seat four people around a circular table. You can pick four people for the first seat, then three people for the second seat, two people for the third seat, and one person for the fourth seat. This gives us a grand total of 24 ways, but are these ways unique? If we consider that they are sitting in a circle, we can say that two seating arrangements are the same given that the person to the right and the left of the individual are the same. Therefore, we must divide by four because for any arrangement, you can think of it as everyone standing up and moving to their left. And they can do that four times before they're in their same seat. So that gives us a total of six different combinations to seat these people around the table. What is the implications then for our combinations? We already know the formula for permutations is n factorial over n minus r factorial. This is how we got the original 24 in, the, uh, in our seating arrangement problem. But if we want to disregard the way that they are ordered, and then we were talking about making combinations or like the choose function, you have to figure out how many ways there are to permutate R items made of R elements. Because in the R permutation, you've picked out R elements out of N, but those can be arranged by a permutation of R elements, out of R elements. So, P R of R equals R factorial. By the division rule, we must then subtract the permutations by R factorial, and this gives us the choose function. CNR, which is N factorial over R factorial times N minus R factorial. Now we can use this idea to help us figure out how many symmetric relations there are between a set A of N elements. We know that A, A can be a part of it, and then, so if these were lettered, so, as we say, A, A, B, B, and C, C would all be a part of it, so that would give us N possible relations, right? That would give us each, each element would have one option, namely itself, and then there are N of them, so it would be N times 1. But what if we consider the other ones that would satisfy a symmetric relation, which is AB and BA? Excluding itself, each element can relate then to n minus 1 elements. So A could relate to B, A could relate to C, A could relate to D, or so on and so on, but not A because we've already counted that. Now, but we must consider that would be n times n minus 1, but a relating to b is equivalent to b relating to a because those both must be n in the relation for it to be symmetric. So now we must divide by 2 because there are two ways for each and every single relation that I described. Now if we add it together, n times n minus 1 over 2 plus n gives us n plus n plus 1, no, n times n plus 1 over 2. And if we want to figure out how many total relations, we know that each one of these relations could or could not exist, so that gives us 2 to the 1 half n times n plus 1. 